Okay, so you've taken a look at the warm-up, practicing perimeter, and you've thought about the things that you notice and wonder. And now we're going to take a look at the next problem. Here is a square inscribed in a circle with radius one meter. Now inscribed means that the vertices of the square are all on the circle. What is the perimeter of the square? Okay, so let's think about these right triangles that we've been talking about. We know that the radius of the circle is one, right? And so we can create a right triangle here and we know that the angles of a square are 90 degrees, so each of these radii are actually cutting those angles in half. So we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle here. Okay, so this is the opposite of that angle. And then we're going to say this x, uh, and that is the hypotenuse. Okay, so we can find the length of that hypotenuse, which is the side of the square, by setting up a trig ratio. So we have the opposite, and we want to find the hypotenuse, so that means we want to use sine. So the sine of 45 degrees equals, I didn't mean to move that there, okay, equals, 1, which was the opposite side, over the hypotenuse, which is x. Okay, so then how do we get x um, out from underneath? We're going to multiply both sides by x, okay? And so on the right-hand side, those cancel out because x divided by x is just 1. So then we have x times the sine of 45 degrees equals 1. Well, we want to get x by itself, so now we're going to go ahead and divide by the sine of 45 degrees. Okay, and so then that gets your x by itself because sine of 45 divided by sine of 45 is just 1. So you can plug 1 over oops, uh, sine of 45 degrees into your calculator and you get approximately 1.414, and there are some uh, more numbers after that. All right, so that is one side of this square. Well, we want to find the perimeter of the square, so our perimeter is four of those sides, and that's an x. Sorry, it's kind of an ugly x, uh, and so we're just going to plug in that 1.414, uh, into that expression. And so we end up with the perimeter being approximately 5.7 meters. Okay, so the perimeter of our square is 5.7 meters. Now we're going to take a look at the perimeter of a pentagon inscribed in a circle with radius 1 meter. So, we have a circle, and then we have a regular pentagon. Let's see how well I can draw this. Okay, um, and let's see how big that is. Oh, not quite big enough. So let's try to make this a little bit bigger. And... That's a little better. Okay, so our radius of the circle is 1, okay? And um, remember that to find the interior angles of a pentagon, we want to take 180 times n minus 2. And remember that n is the number of sides, okay? So we have 180 times 5 minus 2, which is really just 3. So the total number of uh, degrees in that pentagon is 540. But if we want one of those interior angles, we're going to divide that 
by five because there are five angles and we end up with 108 degrees. So each of these angles right here is 108 degrees. So when we draw that radius, we are actually cutting that 108 degrees um, in half. And so we can make that triangle here. There we go. Uh, and so this is actually 54 degrees. Okay, so I'm just going to draw that triangle a little bit bigger so it's easier for us to see. Um, and so we've got that. And so each of these sides is one, and this is 54 degrees. Now, if we drop the altitude from the vertex, sorry, that's not a very good drawing, uh, to the side, then we make a right angle. Okay, and if we are trying to find this little piece right here, so each of those could be X if you want. Uh, if we're trying to find X, well, X is um, the adjacent side to the 54 degree angle, and one is the hypotenuse. So we can say, all right, cosine of 54 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is X over the hypotenuse, which is one. So X is the cosine of 54 degrees, which is approximately uh, 0.58779. Um, and we have 10 of those little pieces because each of these sides here was cut in half. So each of those has two X's in it. So if we multiply our X value times 10, we end up with approximately 5.9 meters. Okay, so that's how we can find the perimeter of a pentagon inscribed in a circle. All right, now we're gonna take a look at what happens if we uh, wanna find the perimeter of a hexagon inscribed in a circle. So again, we're gonna have a circle here and there's my circle. And I want to construct a hexagon. So that's got six sides. And we'll see if that's good. That's the beauty of technology. We can always adjust it so we don't have to construct too much. And that looks pretty good. All right, so again, we have a radius, and remember that goes to the circle, so it's going to the vertex of the hexagon, and that is one, and then we could draw the other one, which is also one. Now, the nice thing about a hexagon is that can get cut up into six equilateral triangles, okay? And so each of these angles down here are 60 degrees and so we can drop our altitude there to create that right angle okay so if we know that this this radius here or the hypotenuse is one then we can do the same thing we just did with the pentagon and make that x make that x so there's two x's on each side um, and then we can use um, our trig ratios to solve this now if you remember your 30 60 90 triangle you actually um, are a step ahead, so you might actually already know what that x value is. Um, but we're going to use our trig ratio right now to figure it out. All right, so we have 60 degrees, and that x is the adjacent side, and the 1 is the hypotenuse, so we're going to use cosine. So the cosine of 60 degrees is equal to the adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 1, so that makes it pretty easy. So cosine of 60, if you put that in your calculator, you'll notice it's one half. Okay. Um, so remember that the short leg of the 60 degree, the 30, 60, 90 triangle is always half of whatever the hypotenuse is. All right. And so again, we had two of those on the side, right? So we actually have 12 of those one halves. Okay. So if we have 12 one halves, that's going to give us six meters. So the perimeter 
of the hexagon is six meters. So now number four says, what is happening to the perimeter as the number of sides increase or increases? So let's take a look. So when we had four sides, it was 5.7 meters. When we had five sides, it, was, it went up to 5.9 meters. And then when we had six sides, it went to six meters. So what is happening there? Well, it's increasing. by smaller amounts as the number of sides increases by one. That's an A, increases by one. Okay, so now let's take a look at the next part, 10.3 gentle descent. Okay, an airplane travels 150 miles horizontally during a decrease of three or 35,000 feet vertically. So it's going horizontally 150 miles Okay, and it's it's descending uh, 35,000 feet vertically, and so we're looking at the plane is is descending like this. Okay, um, and so we want to know what is that angle of descent, right? So what is this theta here? Okay, and that's also the angle of descent is also uh, considered to be um, an angle of depression. They're really the same thing. So you're going from a horizontal and then you're going down. All right, so that's also called the angle of depression. Okay, so you might see that term as well. All right, so the first problem we have here is that our units are not the same. So we need to get our units to be the same. And so uh, remember that there are 5,280 feet in one mile. So you could convert the miles to feet or the feet to miles. Um, it really just depends on what you wanna do. So if I take my 35,000 feet uh, and I divide by 5,280, I end up with this side being 6.629 miles. So I just converted everything to miles. Okay, so now we're looking at uh, the angle of depression or descent and uh, we have the uh, the green part which is the opposite side and then we have the 150 miles which is the adjacent and so we know that the tangent of the angle is the opposite so 6.629 over the adjacent, which was 150, okay? So then remember, um, you're gonna plug that into the calculator using the inverse tangent function. So you hit tangent, I'm sorry, second tangent, and then you'll type this in to the calculator. Make sure you're in degrees, uh, and you end up with about 2.5 degrees. So that's a small angle, but you would expect it to be a small angle of descent for an airplane. All right, so then we wanna know how far does the plane travel in that time, okay? So what is this X value here for the hypotenuse, all right? And so we can take um, the cosine of our 2.5 degrees, and that's equal to the adjacent, which is 150 over the hypotenuse, right? And so then we can take our x, multiply both sides by x, and then we're going to divide both sides by cosine of 2.5. So x equals 150 over the cosine of 2.5 degrees. And when you plug that into the calculator, you get about 150.1 miles.